how to sound like Franz Liszt. So this video has a little bit of a backstory because if you've previously seen this video that I've done for Wired going over the 16 levels of piano composition, in it I show a potential version of Happy Birthday inspired by Liszt. But for me, physicality doesn't equal complexity. And as you can hear, I was really glossing over a lot of details behind his music, and I was relying mostly on this generic sense of virtuosity to demonstrate this particular point I was trying to make in the video. In the recent months though, I've been learning a lot more about Liszt as a composer and historical figure, largely in thanks to this special research trip to Weimar that I was generously invited to be a part of, which I'll cover more in depth in future videos to come. But my viewpoint of Liszt has really been changing and shifting. I've always put him into a category of he's this virtuoso composer that is better off played by talented 12-year-old prodigies. But this has been changing and hopefully I can share some of the things that I've picked up on in this video. And later, of course, an updated version of Happy Birthday in the style of Franz Liszt. Here's a C-sharp minor chord in its simplest form. Liszt would turn it into something like this. Here's a cadence going between tonic and dominant. Often, Liszt will insert many diminished chords in between. Now, of course, let's spread these out into very wide chords. There are many ways to break up a chord. Here's one of them. Oftentimes, Liszt will do this in the form of tremolos. You'll also find a lot of dotted rhythms. And many jumps. And better yet, here's a regular arpeggio. Oftentimes you'll hear arpeggios done in a fast and dramatic way. You'll hear an abundance of arpeggios in general. And even better yet, add in a middle line. Say that you're going from one note to a note higher. This will often fill that gap with a chromatic scale. Even better, double it up with a parallel interval, like thirds. Or sixths. There are a lot of filigree runs. Again, here are some chromatic notes. And add in broken chords to each one of them. When you have an upwards motion like this, a lot of times it'll be done in double octaves. Say for example you're on a chord, D flat major. To move to another major chord a third away, for example D flat major to B flat major, traditionally involves a couple of steps. Liszt often uses these chords side by side, and this is called a chromatic median relationship. Say that you have a bouncy idea. Liszt would add a little more sparkle. And in the lower register, oftentimes you'll hear these very dark, dry, and spooky type of material. In contrast, he has many lyrical and romantic type gestures as well.
Here's a regular group of ascending chords. Have them staggered. And again, once more, here's a chromatic scale. Stagger them by alternating between broken octaves. Staggering chords and intervals in general is very common. For example, these chords can be staggered in this fashion. Notice that in this particular case, there's an overlap between the thumbs. A lot of colorful runs are created by weaving together two different types of chord sounds. Here's one combining major and diminished, and it would turn into something like this. Later on, his music began to lose much of this type of virtuosity, have more dissonance and less tonality, as you can hear in this excerpt from Noir Gris. But for this video's arrangement, I do want to include a lot of these points previously mentioned because Liszt really helped progress piano writing forward with these elements. And now, after literally dozens of takes, here is Happy Birthday in the style of Franz Liszt. Like I mentioned previously, there will be more videos about Liszt coming pretty soon, so make sure you look out for those. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.